Okay, looking at the next method of data collection, as I scroll down through the list we've got here, uh, the next one to come up is observation. And you'll note the resource that I've selected for this, again, comes from the Qualitative Research Guidelines project that the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has put together. Uh, there are a couple of things that I'll mention about that. Um, when you go to this particular site, um, you know, it talks about observation defined and it talks about participant observation and non-participant observation. Um, just to let you know, participant observation is generally used when you are looking at an ethnography, although in some cases it might also include a, a case study. But essentially the difference between participant observation and non-participant observation is essentially in participant observation, the observer is a participant in the setting. Um, so if you think about an ethnography as living amongst, uh, you know, a, a, a group of people that are being studied and, and being among them and, and trying to understand the world through their eyes, obviously you're participating in their society and in their activities at the same time you're observing them. Whereas if your administrator comes into your classroom to observe you as a uh, form of, of teacher evaluation, for example, they're not a participant in the setting. They are, you know, a non-participant. Now, um, the other thing that you may see from time to time for observations, you may see it called field notes or field research. Essentially, field notes are generally what gets um, created in order for your observation. So essentially when you're in the field observing something, you're taking notes about what you're seeing and what you're uh, you know, observing. Um, and that's assuming you're not recording anyway. Even if you are recording, you're still probably taking notes. So oftentimes you'll see it called field notes or field research. Uh, like the other item from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, you'll note that they have a reasonable list of resources here that are useful to you. Uh, again, like most of the other ones we've seen, these tend to be books, although there are a couple of articles that are linked in here, um, but most of them are, are books that they've linked there, um, some of which are linked in through Google, but most of them are ones that uh, you'd probably have to, to purchase to get access to. Um, so a couple of notes that I put here, um, you know, make sure you note the distinction between participant and non-participant. Um, if you're doing action research, please note that you are doing non-participant observation. While you may think that you are a participant in that particular setting, you're not when you're doing the observation. The only way in which you can undertake an observation in an action research setting, because in an action research setting, you're the teacher in the room. You're delivering the instruction. You're facilitating the instruction. You can't be observing at the same time. So the only way in which you could conduct an observation if you're doing action research would be if you were to record what was happening and then watch the video afterwards. But as you're watching the video, you're not a part participant in the setting anymore. You're that non-participant observer watching what's happening, uh, void of that, that direct contact while the observation is occurring. In addition to the resources that I've got in Blackboard, the uh, couple of resources that I wanted to point out to you, uh, one that I think is, it's actually a really good um, classroom related one. So if you're doing educational research, I think this is uh, quite a good one. It's a guide to observation and participation in the classroom and introduction to education. Uh, so this one is quite nice and it's done by Reed and Bergman. So there we go. Reed and Bergman. Uh, so this, I think, from an educational research perspective is quite a useful uh, guide. Um, it tends to focus more on the how-to as opposed to focusing up on the the academic background. Not saying that you know there isn't some of that background information in there. Although unlike some of the other ones that you've got here, uh, you won't find much in the way of um, you know references that you can use 
uh, to support things beyond just this book itself. So, uh, but it's a really good how-to guide. So there's a lot of good information in here about you know how to go about doing the observation. There's you know a variety of forms and checklists and stuff in there that you know you could use or adopt or adapt um, depending upon what you are interested in doing. Um, and, and you know exactly what you were studying. The other one that I will mention, and again, it's another one of these from the uh, Qualitative Research Methods series by Sage. Uh, so it's uh, again another one of these small, short little. Uh, this one is 87 pages of text, um, and you'll note that the authors are similar to the authors that were listed at the bottom of the uh, Robert Wood Johnson uh, resource that I provided. So the Adler and Adler. Um, are authors that, if you've looked through that first, would be familiar to you. Uh, this one, Membership Roles in Field Research, and remember I said that oftentimes when you're looking at observation, in addition to being called observation or participant observation, oftentimes it'll be called field research or field notes, and as you can see here, they call this one field research. So um, those are the only two resources that I've got for observation. Um, it's not one that I've, I've used a lot myself, at least in a formal way. Um, and when I have, in all honesty, uh, the Adler and Adler, or for my purposes, actually, the qualitative handbook of, um, or the handbook of qualitative research has always been the guide that I've tended to use for that particular me method of data collection.